from my in-home studio. Um, I'm hoping to speak with my kinder and first graders. You guys are doing a phenomenal job and I love getting to see you guys on social media, making all these wonderful artworks with your family. Um, this week assignment is going to be, drum roll please, ta-da! We are going to be creating a rainy day color wheel. And so if you look on the specials website, Mrs. Vaughn created a template for you. If you have access to a printer and you would like to print it out, it does make life a little bit easier, but otherwise, I'm gonna step-by-step -step you through creating your own version of the template. Um, these below are going to be some versions of the color wheel that you're gonna see at the end of this video. Um, but to get to this point, we have a few things we have to discuss before we get there. So I'm gonna put these aside and I'm gonna actually pull out the template first. So here is my template that we uh, have access to online. And it just, I want you guys to start with the basics and start with your primary colors. So you're gonna get to use any material that you have at home. So whether that's colored pencils or watercolor or markers or crayons, you pick what you wanna use. And I want you to start out with your primary colors. So you're going to color in your red, your blue and your yellow sections, okay? While you're working on that, if you're using the template, Ms. Vaughn is gonna show you how to create this template if you don't have one at home. You're gonna just need a plain white piece of paper or a piece of paper from the junk drawer that has text and font on one side and a blank side on the other. And you're gonna be using that first. Uh, you need a bowl or a plate or something round that you can trace. Um, I have this bowl. And um, I go over this in class, but you wanna make sure anytime you're tracing anything, you wanna push your object closest to the edge so that you have, um, you're maximizing your scrap paper because later, maybe, I might need a little test sheet of paper and this gives me a lot more space than this. So I'm gonna push my bowl to the edge and I'm gonna use a pencil and I'm going to trace around the bowl. And just like a reminder, guys, if you're grabbing anything from the kitchen, make sure you have permission um, that you can use this. Like this bowl is glass um, and so I just need to make sure an adult knows I'm borrowing it if I'm going to borrow something um, that's not yours or if it's the family's in the kitchen or something like that. Let me go put this away before I break it or something. <laughs> now that I'm back, oh, that's just the kitty. Um, here's my perfect circle. I need to divide it up into six pieces and I don't have a ruler at home, um, so, but I do have a book and this book is wonderful. I actually have a video on the website of me reading it to you guys if you had like story time with Miss Vaughn. I'm gonna divide this up into six pieces. So the first thing I'm gonna do is locate my center of my circle um, just by eyeballing it so that I kind of know where that piece is. I'm gonna take an edge of my book. I've got a cardboard book, but any Thing that is straight, maybe have a tray or anything like that to kind of help you be your ruler for today. And then I'm going to divide this top section into three different sections. And I want the top to have three and the bottom to have three because three plus three is six. And there's six colors in our basic color wheel. So now that I've kind of eyeballed where those um, edges of those pie slices are going to be, I'm going to create a line that touches that outside mark, the center mark, and then I'm gonna go ahead and push it on to the other side. I'm gonna rotate my book and do the same thing over here. And that should roughly give me six sections. Now, 
I would highly advise first grade to give this a try. Um, again, if you want to print out the template, that's perfectly okay as well. Uh, we have red at the top most of the time. Uh, we're going to skip yellow, skip blue, and then I want you guys to go ahead and color those sections in, okay? So then that way, you guys that were working on your template while Miss Long went through that, we're kind of at the same point, right? We've got a red, a skip a space, yellow, and blue. Let me go ahead and put in the equations or the math equations. We're going to have red plus yellow equals orange. And then we have yellow plus blue equals green. And then we have blue plus red equals violet or purple. Gosh, y'all, my hair today. There we go. So here is the same color wheel on both sections. All right. So I'm going to work really quickly, but you need to take your time because I'm going to go fast. You have choices on this part. If you would rather color them all solid, be my guest and do so. If you would rather get a little bit more um, into the design element, we're creating the umbrella for our rainy day portrait. So this umbrella has line shape and texture um, on the primary colors, which are the first ones I suggest that you do. Um, I used markers and watercolor. And then for my secondary colors, I'm going in with color pencil and um, marker as well. So let me finish these boys up for you. Miss Vaughn is always looking for really good craftsmanship, so making sure there's no extra blank spaces, everything is going in the same direction. The pressure is the same. If I wanted to, I could mix my own colors in these sections. I could mix yellow and red color pencil and create like a mixed orange. Or if you're okay with using the pre-mixed color pencil, why not? Um, it's an experiment game. Miss Vaughn has the primary color video on the website for you to watch. It should be reviewed to all of your children. They can dance and sing along with it as you play it. So if that's something that your family is interested in pulling up, go ahead and do so. And then I think I'm going to do just like a blanket of green over my green section. <clears throat> Guys, I always want you to use what you have. So if you don't have color pencils, use what you do have. If you have crayons, use crayons. If you don't have watercolor, but you have food dye, use food dye and lots of water to create your paints. Um, there's always a solution. And maybe if your parents are going out at some point or if some, a neighbor may have it, you may ask if you could borrow things as well. Um, there's always a way to make it work. So here is my colored, completed color wheels. Now, you guys are coloring your templates. So let me just go over this real quick. Let me do orange. Um, red plus yellow is orange. So when you're using markers, make sure you're doing great craftsmanship.
Okay. So for those of you who are used to Miss Mom's classroom cutting out a circle, we normally start with a square. So if I were you, I would cut out your template um, and make it into that square shape. Uh, kinders, if you want to explain to mom and dad how we hold our scissors, our thumb goes into the small hole and all the other fingers go into the big hole of the scissors. Our scissors face out in front of us like they're shooting out from our belly button and they stay this direction. They don't move or, or turn or rotate. All the hard work actually happens with our other hand, our non-drawing hand. And let me go ahead and cut this piece off real quick. Ta-da, here's my square. To make a perfect circle, you're gonna cut off your four corners first. So I'm gonna open and close my scissors, keeping them right in front of me, and I'm rotating the paper with my non-drawing hand. All right. Then I have a hexagon, um, I'm sorry, an octagon. And we are going to cut off eight corners next. So open and close, open and close, open and close. Keep rotating with your non-drawing hand, cutting off all eight sides. Okay. After you cut your eight sides, you have a pretty good generic shape of a circle. Um, they just have all of these straight edges. It's not rounded. So what I teach the kids at school is if you make your giant scrap, and so you're gonna start and go all the way around, turning your paper, not your scissors. Keep turning and rotating, turning and rotating. And then you're gonna eventually get to your end, okay? Now this color wheel does not look like an umbrella yet. So let me show you how we're going to turn it into an umbrella. I have all these dash dash lines that I've drawn on the template. For those of you who don't have the template, let me show you where those lines go. Okay. So I suggest um, you think of a pie slice. So let's start with the yellow pie slice first. I'm going to do a little tick mark on each edge of the pie slice. Um, and there's like a rounded edge here and we want that edge to become a straight line. So if I take my straight edge or my book or whatever I'm going to be using and I connect those two points with my book, I can then draw me a straight line. In this part, I do not need. So I'm gonna do that all the way around I'm going to then cut off those edges because I won't need them anymore. So for example, I'm gonna go back to my orange template that I was using earlier. And this dotted line, I'm gonna open and close my scissors and cut that off. If I go all the way around, you're gonna end up with, these are going to be the umbrellas to our lovely portrait, our rainy day scene that we're creating. And so your choice on how you color them in, they just need to make sure they're in rainbow order or color wheel order. Start with your primary colors first and know that those, when you mix those two primaries together, you're gonna create that secondary color in between. So I've got a really great video attached to kind of expand on mixing colors and things like that. Um, we've done that in class where we've mixed colors this is all kind of a review, but we're making a formal color wheel so that when we move on with color theory in the next couple of weeks, you will have this to reference to, and this will be something that everybody um, will have a really good time making since the weather outside is not so great. All right. I hope for you guys to do your final details. Make sure you like the way you've created your umbrella. Stay dry, and I will tune in with you for part two later. See you soon. Bye.